Welcome to the Haunted 365, and in this video we're going to be making our own mold to produce our very own skull candles, but not just any skull candles. This is a bleeding skull candle. So let's get to it. Alright, I've got my little Dollar Tree ceramic skull here, and the first step of the process is we have to get rid of this indention right here in the bottom. The idea is we don't want to have any undercuts to where when this is sitting here like this and you're putting the silicone on top of it to make your mold, you don't want it to get underneath and create like a mechanical lock on any part that it's going to get hung up on when you're trying to peel the mold off. So the first thing I'm going to do here is I have some clay and in this case it's monster clay which is kind of pricey clay. I mean, of course, you could just use something from, you know, the, the hobby store or something like that. But monster clay is actually pretty good stuff because uh, it's highly moldable. Um, you just have to pop it in the microwave for just a few seconds and it will get uh, soft and malleable. But as it cools off, it will get extremely hard. Uh, the best part about it is, is it's reusable. Uh, if you're whatever crafter, whatever you're doing, if you're wanting to make something out of monster clay and then take a mold directly off of it with silicone, you can do that and then just heat the monster clay back up again, turn it back into a, a malleable form, and just reuse it over and over. So, that being said, let's start peeling some off of here and packing it down into this undercut area. We just want to make sure that if any of our silicone mold making material happens to seep underneath this, that it won't just pull up in this huge indention right here. And here on the jawline, I'm just going to try to blend this in and that will kind of get rid of that undercut or at least make it less harsh and less likely to make the mold stick. I will try to level this out a little bit just by pressing it down on the table. And I'm not going to worry too much about this hole because I'm actually going to put a bead of hot glue all the way around the hole and use it to stick it to this plastic board. And at the same time, it's going to create a seal to keep the uh, silicone from seeping underneath and then just going inside the hole. All right, I've got my trusty glue gun handy. So I'm going to put just a nice big bead of glue all the way around this opening and then just stick it down and hold it. All right, and now we're ready to mix up some silicone. And for this, you're going to need a gram scale because the silicone gets mixed by weight. Uh, I will leave a link in the description to a cheap gram scale that you can pick up. Uh, we're going to be using some smooth on uh, platinum cure silicone and I have a hardener that goes in it that's actually an accelerated hardener so normally this stuff would take hours to cure this will get it cured down in about 30 to 60 minutes I will also leave a link in the description to uh, where you can pick up a trial size of the silicone because you don't really need this much I just have this much on hand because I use it for lots of different things and the trial size kit has got enough silicone in it that you could easily uh, do what we're doing here as far as making the uh, mold off of that skull for a candle and several other projects easily. All right, now I'm going to weigh out some silicone. And I'm just going to use a really cheap plastic mixing spoon to do this with. And you can reuse this over and over because the silicone will just peel right off of it when it dries. And we're going to be going for 100 grams of the silicone. The process we're going to be using to make the mold is a brush on mold. And you really don't need a whole lot for this first part because all we're going to be doing is brushing on a really thin print coat just to pick up all the details and ensure that it's bubble free. Actually, it's looking like we're only going to need about 50 grams to accomplish what we need to. And as you can see, the viscosity of this stuff kind of has the consistency of 
warm marshmallow fluff. Kind of looks like it too. And I find that it's easier when you're mixing up small amounts just to dip the spoon into the silicone and then let it just drain off as opposed to trying to pour it in there which can definitely make a mess and it's very easy to overshoot how much you want to put in here. Alright, that's got us to 50 grams. So now I'm going to switch to the catalyst and it gets mixed in at a ratio of 10 to 1. So if I have about 50 grams of silicone in here, I'll need to put in 5 grams of the hardener. Alright, I put just a slight bit of extra hardener in there just to speed up this whole process so I'm not sitting around all day or all night waiting for this stuff to cure. Although if you use the hardener that typically comes with the kits, you will have to wait overnight in between coats. But we're only doing two coats. Now you just want to get this stuff mixed up extremely well. You don't want any white streaks. The whole thing should look like like a darker shade of Pepto-Bismol pink in this case. Of course, other brands and types of silicone will have different colors of hardener, so they might be blue or they might be pink in this case, or they could be kind of a tannish yellow or green. Make sure you really scrape the sides. It's also good to use a translucent or clear cup because, as you can clearly see, we have a whole lot of unmixed product down here at the bottom. And if you're using the standard hardener that typically comes with these kits, you'll have a work time of about 30 to 45 minutes with this stuff before it starts to kick off. Uh, since I used that accelerated hardener, I've only got about six or seven minutes tops to work with this. So it's in my best interest to get this stirred quickly. All right, now that I've got this thoroughly stirred up, I'm just going to brush on a very even layer just using a chip brush. And this particular batch of silicone that I'm using is actually quite old so it's, it has a tendency to thicken up over time. So whatever you might get, if it's brand new, it's probably going to have a thinner consistency than this and just by gravity have more of a tendency to just drip and sag and cover the part that way. We just want to make sure we get good even coverage with no air pockets. Make sure everybody's got some silicone on it. Your absolute biggest concern, other than just even coverage, is no air bubbles. It'd be very easy to get some voids in these eyes or inside this nose. So I'm just gonna keep going over this and make sure that I get everything covered. Make sure I get this undercut down here on the back. All right, now that I'm pretty sure that I've got an even coat on everything, I'm just going to take what I have left here and just really glob it up around the bottom and then let gravity just kind of work for me and bridge the gap between the skull and the, uh, the base that it's sitting on. Just going along looking for any thin areas or areas that might have air pockets and just hitting those one last time. I can already feel this is starting to get thicker and a little more tacky which is my signal that it's about time to just walk away and leave it alone. You can see it's wanting to pull on the brush a little more than it was when I started. Everything looks nice and evenly covered. So we are just gonna stop messing with it, walk away, and I'm gonna come back after this has had time to dry and put on the second coat. All right, that first coat is dry, and now we're gonna move on to the next step. And this time we're actually gonna get out more of the silicone. We're actually gonna go for about 150 grams, because this time we're actually going to be adding a additive to the silicone that makes it thicken. 
and the more you add the thicker it gets it can go from just slightly thicker in viscosity than the way it started all the way up to chewing gum which if you've gotten it to the point of chewing gum you've put too much and you've gone too far I'll also put a link to this stuff down in the description and you might think that buying all these things is a bit excessive to just make a candle but you have to bear in mind that you're going to have enough left over to do all sorts of different projects so it's going to last you for a while if you get all these things this mold will ultimately be only about 200 grams worth of silicone and most of the starter kits come two and a half to three pounds and there's about 450 grams per pound so you're actually going to get quite a bit of use out of this all right and that's 150 grams and now that I'm looking at what I have here I think I'm gonna add about another 30 to take it up to 180 just because it's probably better to have the mold a little thicker than too thin all right and that takes us to 180 so as before this is mixed 10 to 1 so I'm gonna be adding 18 grams and now I'm gonna add the thickening agent and a little bit of this goes a very long way this bottle this size will actually last you an extremely long time because for this small batch here I'm only gonna add four drops I can always add more but if I add too much I can't take it away I can tell the thickening agent is starting to do its job because this batch is a lot harder to mix than the first one all right and I'm going to use a tongue depressor to spread this on with if the mold was smaller I could use a popsicle stick and of course if it was larger I would probably opt for something like a paint stirrer but I'm just going to start globbing this on and being very liberal with it now is not the time to be stingy because we are trying to build up thickness on our mold it probably isn't a bad idea to wear gloves while you do this and now just to kind of speed things along I'm just gonna dump a big glob here right on top and just start working that in so now I'm going around and everywhere that it's settled down to the bottom on the board I'm just picking that back up and adding it back onto the part I'm going to really make sure that we get underneath this undercut on the back of the head and along the sides because we don't want any air voids and since gravity is working here I'm making extra effort to bulk up the very top of the head because as this stuff drains down that's the spot that's going to be the thinnest I can tell by the way this stuff I can tell by the I can tell by the way the silicone is reacting now and the way it feels as I try to pick it up and pull it back up at the top that I probably only have about one minute left to work with this all right I think we're gonna call that good and we're gonna let this dry completely if you used the accelerated part B like I did then it should only take between 45 minutes to an hour and if you're using just what came with it expect to wait probably overnight so the silicone is completely cured now and just an example here of how easy it is to clean off of stir spoons and things like that once it's cured you can just peel it right off no problem all right so I have some more of my monster clay here that I warmed up in the microwave for about 20-25 seconds or so and I'm going to start tearing off some pieces kind of rolling them up into snakes and then pinching them flat all right I'm gonna take my little flattened snake and start building a wall down the midline front to back of the mold I'm gonna turn this around backwards and reinforce this wall with little bits of clay and I'm going to continue on down and backing that up with more clay on the back 
the clay isn't going to want to stick to the silicone just because nothing really wants to stick to silicone which is why I'm building it up so much on the back side just so there's at least a lot of surface area to hold this wall in place all right now I'll turn my attention to the front side I'm make sure that it's all making good contact and then I've got a somewhat smooth-ish surface on the front here. And the whole purpose of this is we're going to be making a really quick and dirty plaster mother mold to go over this mold. Because if you just left it as the silicone, whenever you tried to pour candle wax or whatever in here, it's going to be floppy and flimsy and just want to come apart and deform the plaster mother mold will make sure that it holds its shape. Now, on to the plaster. All right, I've just got an old container here and I have about a half inch to three quarters of an inch of just room temperature water in there. Whenever you're mixing plaster, however much water you put in here, expect after you put the, uh, the powdered plaster in here for it to expand in volume at least two and a half to three times. So if you're ever mixing up a large batch of plaster, you never want to go halfway up a container because you're going to end up probably going over. And by the time you've filled it all the way to the top, the plaster is still probably going to be too runny to even use. And I am... Definitely I'm going to be wearing some gloves for this next part. Now I'm going to start adding my plaster a little bit at a time. And then to, this is just regular pottery plaster. Or you could use uh, just some stuff, whatever you can get from the hobby store for this purpose. It doesn't really have to be the greatest. Uh, of course, if you were making like a mask mold or something like that, you would want to go with something with more quality, like... Hydrocal or UltraCal. We'll be getting into stuff like that in the future. And I'm just adding the plaster until it forms a like a dry lake bed on the top of the water. Once it starts forming on the top of the water here, we know we've got the right consistency and it's best just to mix this stuff up with your hand that way you can squeeze out any lumps always a good idea to wear gloves while you're doing this because you have to be careful with anything uh, that you're doing with plaster if you're washing your hands off or cleaning out your bucket or anything like that to make sure that you do not put it down the drain of your pipes at your house because this stuff mixes with water and pretty much turns into concrete. So if you put it down your drain or in your pipes, it's going to pretty much turn those into concrete as well. If you're working with large batches and making up uh, a lot of this plaster dust in the air, you would also want to wear a dust mask or respirator because same thing. It's going to form little rock inside your lungs, which is not what you want. Definitely wear gloves if you have any sort of wedding rings or anything like that because this stuff will get underneath it while you're mixing and then it will dry and then it's a real pain to try to get it out of the inside of a ring. Ask me how I know this. That is pretty well mixed so I'm going to ditch the glove and we're ready to start making the mother mold. Alright, I intentionally made this plaster exceptionally thick so I'm going to re-glove and I'm just gonna apply it onto this part kind of like a, like a putty or something like a spackle because like I said once again we're not going for perfection we just want something on here a little extra to give this mother mold or to give the main mold rather some strength so that way it's not just flopping around and since I'm starting out with plaster that's already the consistency of a putty it means I'm not gonna have very long to work with it 
three or four minutes tops. Because when you mix it up in a normal ratio of water to plaster, this is the consistency it would be after about, you know, 10, 15 minutes. Making sure that I have it all the way up against this mold wall. And even when it's in this consistency, if you just kind of rub on it like that, it will slightly liquefy and you can kind of push it around where you want it. And the plaster has just about had it. So now is a good time just to kind of go through, smooth things out, and just pretty everything up a little bit. Because when this stuff dries, it'll leave hard, jagged little pieces that you could possibly cut yourself on. So it's good just to kind of try to smooth everything out. All right, and as plaster dries, it goes through a exothermic reaction where this will actually start to generate some heat. And then afterward, when the heat is dissipated, it will get really cool to the touch. When it goes through those two stages and then returns back to room temperature, that's when you know it is completely cured. So I'm gonna stop messing with this and let that sit for probably 30 minutes to an hour for it to completely cure. And then I'll come back, we'll peel off the clay, and then Vaseline the exposed plaster, and then put the back half on, and the Vaseline will keep the two halves from sticking together. All right, the plaster is completely dry. So the next step is to remove this little clay wall, which should just pop right off and you can clean any little bits of plaster and whatnot off of the clay because it's monster clay and you can just reuse it over and over. So the next step is to take some just good old petroleum jelly and I'm gonna apply this using a chip brush. I'm just gonna make sure I get it completely covered all over the plaster where it's going to touch the other part of the plaster, the back half, getting every little nook and cranny. I would suggest going over this once and then going over it a second time followed by a third time just to ensure that you got every little surface. Because everywhere that there is not this Vaseline on the plaster, the new plaster will stick right to it. So in that respect, there's no such thing as putting on too much Vaseline. And go over this edge just a little bit with some more of the Vaseline, just in case any of the plaster makes it from the back side onto the front. But we're going to try to avoid that. But this is just a little cheap insurance. All right, I mixed up a second batch of plaster, pretty much the, the same way as I did before. This time I made it just a little bit looser so it's a little less putty-like and a little more pudding. And I'm just gonna dip my hand down in here and just let this flow right onto the back of the mold. So you can see already the the difference it makes in just the amount of plaster that you're adding to the water. This is generally the consistency that you would want to work with, especially if you're making like a mask mold or something like that. Now that I have a little on there, I'm going to take a chip brush and just kind of get around the edges here to make sure that it gets into any undercuts. Right, it's starting to get back to that putty consistency, which is my cue to start just shoveling it on there with my hand. And remember, even when it's in this state, if you're having trouble getting it in a particular area, if you just jiggle it with your hand, you can usually get it to flow where you want it.
All right, I'm okay with that. So now we're gonna let this cure completely, which I know from the last coat, it took about an hour and 15 minutes to get completely cured. So I will come back to this and we'll be ready to crack it open. All right, the plaster is completely cured. And now we're faced with the task of trying to separate the mold. Just looking around for any little cracks or anything. And since we use so much Vaseline, it is coming apart extremely easily. There we go. There's the back. Gotta be careful, we don't want to crack anything. And there's that. All right. So now we have our front and back half of the mother mold. So now we just need to release our little skull guy from his silicone prison. All right, so the first thing I'm gonna do here is kinda try to clean up the bottom a little bit where it's just kind of all over the place. I just need to turn it around to the back side. There is some stretch to the silicone. I mean, it's got a little bit of stretch to it, but not enough for us to get this mold off of this skull. Uh, there's just too many undercuts and things like that going on, and especially the way the back of the head curves in like that. So we are gonna make a cut starting from about midway on the back of the skull and cut all the way through the silicone so we should now we can go ahead and break this off actually ah, there we go hot glue definitely did its job just need to make sure we continue to split all the way down to the ceramic we need to make sure we get through all the silicone just like that. Now we just need to carefully break free all the edges. And then hopefully we can just kind of pop this skull out of here. have a little bit of the silicone stick right there not exactly sure why there must be something abrasive inside that eyeball or something like that but all in all it seems to have turned out okay so now we have a nice shiny new skull mold so then we can take our mother mold figure out which side is which. This looks like it should be the face. And it should fit right down in there as expected. And then the back side should just go right like that. And that should hold everything together. Now all we have to do is put some rubber bands or something around this to hold it together. And that will wrap it up for part one of this video. Make sure that you subscribe and hit the notification bell so you're notified as soon as part two has been posted. And until then, keep it creepy.